Hi guys, welcome back to Formula 1 news. Big rumours emerging that Toto Wolff is potentially eyeing up a takeover of the Formula 1 world, looking to replace Stefano Di Malicani as president and CEO of the Formula 1 group. There's been rumours around Toto Wolff's future for some time, especially when James Valls, his former right-hand man in many ways at Mercedes, went to Williams, arguably, to hone his team principal skills. Very much on Twitter, your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I'd greatly appreciate it. First of all, it's, uh, well, home birthday to Lewis Hamilton today, 39 today, which is kind of wild given that I remember him, you know, coming onto the grid as a fresh-faced youngster back in 2007. But, um, yeah, still arguably very close to his peak performance. I guess 2018 people would say was peak Hamilton, but he has also talked in recent months on how long he intends to continue. The fact that he's now 39, he's going to be driving, of course, when he is 40. And it wasn't long ago he did an interview saying, well, you know, never say never to driving at 40. And, well, his contract does last until he's going to be at least 40, right? And then, of course, you're talking 2026 where is Hamilton going to want to step away before a brand new set of regulations when the possibilities might be there of an eighth title if it's not happening for the next couple of years. I think he will stay around if he's still performing at a good level and obviously Hamilton looks at Alonso who's 42 and then looks at himself still performing well and thinks all right well might as well stay around at least for the time being and of course the money doesn't hurt either I suppose but also it's difficult for these guys to step away and retire in the first place because when they retire it's like well what do we do now and I'm sure Hamilton's got other things he wants to work on. There's all sorts of stuff going on there. But from a competition standpoint, you know, Schumacher and many others, they retire and then they think, you know what, let me just come back. Even Vettel is contemplating it, it seems at least, in interviews that he's done over the last few months. So when you retire, you want to be sure that you've absolutely, you know, used every piece of your powers, basically. But you don't want to go out past your peak to such an extent that you embarrass yourself and you affect your legacy. So it's always a tight rope to walk and it does depend in large degree on how competitive that Mercedes car remains or potentially becomes. Just another one on Stake F1 team Kick Sauber. Okay, they're not calling it that anymore. It's just Stake F1 team. They are gassing up this rebrand beyond belief. I mean, this is their Instagram page. We can, again, tell what the color scheme is going to be. But um, yeah, 35 days to go. 30 days to go. What are they going to do? 25, 20, 15, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, you know what I mean? Like, are they going to do one every single day for a countdown for what's probably going to be a pretty media... We know what it's going to be, no? I mean, is there anything spectacular here? The car's going to be green and black. Okay, we get it, right? But yeah, Sauber's or Stakes um, social media teams stay cooking up some weird stuff. This from Ferrari as well, just to kind of clarify the dates we're looking at. Roughly five weeks until Ferrari launch their car. It's less than a month now until some of the teams launch on February the 5th. Six weeks until testing eight weeks until the Bahrain Grand Prix begins. So that's the timeline from now to the season. And also another update on Charles Leclerc, that apparently the priority at Ferrari is Leclerc's contract, which is, you know, look, it shouldn't be a surprise, but it's still kind of interesting. We hear all this talk, Arno, Sainz and Leclerc, both part of our plans, both great drivers, but um, there's no secret really that Leclerc is Vasseur's favourite, and for good reason, and there's rumours of at least a contract until 2027, if not taking him like a two-year potential performance-related extension up to 2029 you can argue the merits of whether Leclerc should sign such a deal with Ferrari for another five or so years given Ferrari haven't won a championship in some time and the last man to win a championship as the team principal at Ferrari was Mr. Domenicali and we will discuss him on other topics here in just a second but apparently if all Ferrari's projects and aims well there's a good few but one of them is getting the Leclerc signature for their new deal but Leclerc isn't stupid either he of course wants a deal on good terms and the rumor was they're going to pay Leclerc upwards of what Hamilton and Verstappen are making in terms of salary so you know they're going to make it attractive for him to do so but it's also I think going to make it well it's going to send a message to Carlos Sainz that um he is not going to be the man they are building around which he probably should have known for some time anyway but speaking of Domenicali here he is on the left hand side of this picture with Mr. Toto Wolff, of course, well, shareholder and current team principal at Mercedes Formula One team. So rumors emerging a couple of days ago here from Pedro Ferman, and I looked up to see exactly where he said this initially, couldn't quite find it. So look, take all this stuff with a grain of salt. But um, the rumor has that he plans, Toto Wolff, to replace Domenicali as the CEO and president of the Formula One group. Apparently, he therefore expects support from other team leaders to make this happen. We know that the team leaders were maybe even surprisingly behind Toto Wolff when the whole 
Toto versus FIA drama happened in December, right? You guys probably remember there was talks about potential conflict of interest or what do they exactly describe it as? Compliance violations between himself and his wife Susie, who works at the Formula One group, Toto works at Mercedes. There were rumours that were apparently spread between team principals that um, maybe there's some sort of information passage one way or the other that is benefiting Mercedes in some way that should not be allowed. So the FIA said they were going to investigate this and then a couple of days later all of the Formula One team said we had nothing to do with um, you know promoting this as a potential issue so what are you talking about Mr. Ben Sulliam over at the FIA they said oh sorry Toto our bad on that one and then we then heard rumours that they were potentially going to pursue legal action as a result of reputation damage for the FIA doing this whole thing so we know full well that Formula One the team principals even the drivers and certainly the Formula One group from a business point of view from an economic standpoint are at total odds with the FIA on many things. There's always going to be a natural friction there, but it's been probably as well heightened as it's ever been really over these last few months. So the idea that Toto wants to take on, well, effectively, Ben Sully in head to head, or at least take on management of the Formula One group in that battle is quite spicy. But also the fact that he had sin support from the other team leaders in that battle with the FIA not that long ago makes, you know, maybe him believe that if he wants to try and take a push to actually take over the entirety of Formula 1, not take it over as in buy it, but you know what I mean, take it over from a management perspective, then he might well have that support. So where has this come from exactly? There's been rumours now for quite some time that Toto Wolff's future at Mercedes is up in the air to some degree. Look, he's um, you know, shareholder, has a massive stake in Mercedes in Daimler and all this stuff and has become a billionaire as a result. He's not done bad. He remains team principal, CEO of the Mercedes Formula One, AMG, Petronas, whatever situation and, you know, fantastic stuff. But at some point, Wolf knows that probably going to 24 races a season, okay, maybe he does 20 this season, maybe he does 22. He's talked about probably not going to every single one. But at some point, Toto will think, you know what, maybe, um, you know, it's better for me to step into a different role. There were rumours that he was going to potentially eye up stepping into a higher up role in Mercedes again. But now this is another possibility and kind of makes sense for Toto, right? You know, he likes talking to the media. He likes being quite public facing. And um, you can see him doing that role in the same way that Domela Carly was formerly a Ferrari team principal guy. And now he's doing that role. Now, whether Wolf could go straight into that role, that's another question. But this was a tweet from Lawrence Barreto back in the end of 2020, saying that Toto will be in F1 for at least three more years based on a few things happening we've now had those three years. Now, Toto says that he's not going anywhere yet. He says that definitely he's not considering leaving Mercedes. His plan is to contribute, to take Mercedes back to the top. And I'm sure that in the same way that Hamilton doesn't want to retire before his eighth title, Toto doesn't want to step away before Hamilton gets his eighth. But I think there's lots to talk about. Well, you know, if it's not going so well for Mercedes, if Hamilton doesn't get his eighth title, should Hamilton just call it a day and say, you know what, you know, it wasn't to be. To be honest, if Hamilton retires... I could expect, I would imagine that Toto might consider stepping away at a very similar time. I don't think it's something that's particularly often talked about, but um, I can definitely see that on the same year Hamilton retires, Toto Wolf also steps away at the same time. I don't imagine that Toto would want to leave before Hamilton has a chance of an eighth, but if that doesn't happen, you can definitely see the two parting ways for the team at the same time, especially if, let's be honest, Mercedes can't recover. And sure, they won all this under Toto Wolff for many years, but there might be a feeling of, is Toto the right man for the job? Is his head in the game as it previously was? Because let's be honest, all that winning built up Mercedes to a massive valuation and has inflated Toto Wolff's pockets to a great extent. Nowadays, you know, people might argue that Toto Wolves is not fully focused from a competition standpoint as he previously was. I'm not so sure about that, but there's definitely been calls for him to step away and let someone else take over the management and build Mercedes back up to where, you know, they were previously. But then, of course, all team principals, they want to be part of that process themselves and, you know, do what many great football managers have done, managing teams through their, you know, peaks and their declines and then bringing them back to the top. So Wolf, I'm sure, wants to do that. But if all of a sudden an opportunity arises at the Formula One group, Group, then maybe there is more on the table. Now, even recently, this gathered some more weight, really, when last year, James Vowles, of course, left Mercedes as their top strategy guy and was, you know, very much so Wolf's right-hand man in some respects, went to go to Williams as their team principal and as, um, you know, by all accounts, done a great job for them. There was talk at the time between Vowles and Wolf about, you know, his response was great. He was very accommodating and, um, you know, no hard feelings, no disappointment from Toto Wolf. And there were rumours at the time that, 
it. Is this a planned move, right? Is this a strategic move from Mercedes to put Vowles and give him team principal experience at Williams that, sure, they're not the Mercedes B team, but they're the closest thing to it. Of course, much talent has come through the Williams program to Mercedes over the last few years. Plenty of drivers, you know, the likes of Rosberg and Bottas and, of course, uh, Ru Russell in recent memory, you know, come from Williams into Mercedes. There's a reasonable prospect, to be fair, that there could be a similar story there where James Vowles goes over, spends a couple of years as Williams TP, and then is kind of set up in some ways to return to Mercedes and take over Wolf's responsibilities when he steps on. So that was a theory at the time, and now there's rumours that, yeah, Wolf is considering his next step and what that might potentially be. Just to quickly clarify, this is Stefano de Melicali's career, so current CEO of the Formula One group. And as we can see here, was um, I think it was at Lamborghini, wasn't he? That was maybe slightly later on. Yeah, here it is. But from about, you know, 2008 to 2014, he was the team principal at Ferrari during that time period and oversaw the period where, okay, sure, they didn't have the greatest time, but at least they were competitive in championships and they won at the drivers in 2007. But of course, under his leadership, won the constructors in 2008. And after his time in Formula One, went to Audi, worked on the Lamborghini project. And then in 2020, he then joined, well, Formula One as the CEO. Now, of course, there would be massive questions if this was to actually happen as to whether this should be, you know, allowed, right? Is Total Wolf, is it a good idea that Total Wolf goes straight from managing a Formula One team to straight into a Formula One management role where there could be possible crossover in terms of making decisions that benefit a certain team? At the end of the day, if Wolf remains a, a shareholder in Mercedes, can he realistically be the CEO or president of the Formula One group when he can make decisions that can, you know, disproportionately benefit his own team in many ways? That's a question, but, um, you know, it's happened. I mean, everything in Formula One is like this. There's people who work for certain teams. They end up somewhere else. There's always questions about whether there's a conflict of interest in play and maybe they can find a way to get around it. But it's definitely an interesting idea because, you know, Domena Cardi has not had massive amounts of support within the wider Formula One world. While I think a lot of the teams kind of agree with what he's going for, it's not like he's the most popular figure. Neither, of course, is this man on the right-hand side, Mohamed Ben Suliem, who um, has been very much an odds with Domena Cardi in recent memory. So, like, this is not something that I expect to happen anytime soon. There would be plenty of concerns and potential problems and issues if this was to be the case. But is it feasible, right, that Toto Wolf is eyeing up his next step? Yes. Is it feasible that Toto Wolf might step away over the next couple of years? Yes. Is it feasible they have a replacement in mind? Yes. And is this the type of role that Toto Wolf would probably relish the possibility of doing? Maybe also, yes. Yeah. So, enjoy to your thoughts in the comment section below. Definitely a few things to be said on that. Just before we close out the video, I wanted to mention this from Oscar Piastri. I thought it was kind of interesting, actually, in terms of his approach this most recent season. Just shows how mature this guy is and, well, how impressive a driver I thought he was this most recent season. And hopefully, we'll continue on that trend going forward. Because if he can, you know, sort out his tyre wear and degradation and race pace type stuff a little bit more, he's going to be a serious threat to not just Norris in the races, but also to the rest of the grids. And he also confirmed that his racing style last season, like, um, like he didn't think that his lack of experience made him massively underestimated by his peers. But as he says, there's an element of respect and I guess racing people how you want to be raced in some ways. I guess always try and race people hard, but fair. At the beginning of the season or at the beginning of your career, it's always important to show it to people that you're not a pushover because it's not a nice thing to have. Which is a very interesting observation really from Piastri. I think this is definitely true. There's been talk in the past that I think Brundle talked about it, didn't he? When you were racing Senna and Senna would, you know, he would put his car up the inside and he would basically call your bluff that you weren't going to turn in and would take the space and as soon as you backed out of that situation and decided not to crash, Senna knew that he had the mental edge over you and that was a big talking point at the time and it still occurs to some degree today in the same way that when Hamilton had his first race back in Australia 2007 and um, you know made that great move into turn one around the outside, like that was Hamilton marking his territory in a way or at least like basically putting his name out there that okay, I'm a serious contender and it's the same thing when you're Piastri, when you're wheel to wheel with Verstappen, with Hamilton, with these other guys, with Norris, of course, as well, your teammates, with Alonso, for example. 
you're sure you race fair, but you've got to race hard. You know, you're not going to get out of the way. You've got to show these guys that you're here to say you're actually going to be a serious contender. And sometimes that takes putting a move on that they might not expect. You know, um, obviously Hamilton and uh, Piastri had that coming together in Monza when, um, okay, sure, to be fair, Hamilton definitely squeezed Piastri to the side. But, you know, Hamilton might have felt, okay, this rookie guy, let me just, you know, let me squeeze him a little bit, send him to the outside of the road. Piastri held his ground. They made contact. And unfortunately, that was the end of Piastri's race at the time. But, you know, it's moments like that Hamilton then apologized but you know Hamilton knows that next time they're wheel to wheel let's say they've got very competitive cars next season together he knows you can't just push him around which is um you know it's a beneficial thing to have especially when nowadays the safety is better right you can come together and you're not risking your life in the same way that maybe you were 30 years ago but very much interested to your thoughts and all that stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and I'll see you next time